But the Crom Estate has another claim to fame. And to experience it, you've got to be here as the light starts to fade. This is Mark Smith of the Northern Ireland Bat Group. He's a man on a mission, and he's also got permission to help me get up close and personal with one of our most amazing mammals. Mark, your bat detector's going completely mad. There must be loads of them in there. There is. There's actually five to about 800 pipistrels up there, just ready to come out this evening. So what are they... I can hear them on your yeah. bat detector, but I swear I can hear them chirping you up there can. as well. And uh, what you can actually hear up there, you can hear social calls, and it's like, say, five to three at school, and kids know the bell's going to go any minute. School books are going into the bags, pencils are put away, the volume starts to rise, and then as soon as the bell goes at three o'clock, they all just run out of school. And that's the same with the bats. Just as soon as the light level is perfect, they all start streaming out. And Mark's going to try and catch one. We've got one now, I can see the, yeah, I can see the bag moving. Yeah. Oh, this is our smallest oh, bat. That is so tiny. It's a bit angry, like most people would be if they're just caught. Good. That's the pipistrelle, this is, is it? it? Soprano pipistrelle. These little things only weigh as much as a two pence piece and eat around 3,000 insects every night. Do you know, it's fantastically engineered as well because it's got enormous ears. The echolocation coming out of that mouth, the echo coming back to Bouncing its ears, back. gives it a picture exactly the same as what we can see when we're walking about. It can see every tree, it can see the leaves move, it can see all the insects that are flying about. It can also tell if an insect is flying uh, towards it or away from it and it can tell if it's worth eating or not. We're not supposed to handle bats, so yeah. it's just that you've got this I, special licence that lets you Yes, I'm licensed like to that. handle bats. And that is just, like tissue paper, yeah, that wing. This is actually one of this year's young. Bat detector prices start at about £50. Spend a bit more and a different world opens up. This is what you would get from a basic uh, bat detector, just listening to the social sounds here. But if I was just to flick this switch here, you actually slow down the sound 10 times and you hear more of what it's actually like. This is an amazing experience. And during the summer months, there are bat hunts all across the UK. Now, this is a National Trust estate, and they regularly have bat events with people who really know their stuff. It's just a great way to get close to some amazing animals. But it gets even better than this. When bats leave their roosts, they tend to go in staggered groups, each species leaving at a different time. When daylight comes, one theory is that they're vulnerable to predators, so there's a rush to get back to safety. It's just before dawn, and this is when the bats start to swarm. They're getting ready to go back and roost up for the day. There's literally hundreds of them swarming around these buildings right now. It's quite incredible. I can actually hear their wings beating above my head. Now, you can't tell me that isn't worth getting out of bed early for. Just like anything else, got to put a bit of effort in, Believe me, the rewards are well worth it. I'm screeching through the air, but what do you know about a little bird that flies so fast? It's just a blur. Well, here's Brian Black. He knows about them. He's talking about swifts. Dawn over the city, and just listen to the cries of the one bird that doesn't seem to sleep. They're hard to spot, but what you're looking for are the black streaks in the sky. Those are the birds that really live up to their name, swifts. They move so fast that to the casual observer like myself, they're little more than a blur. So that's the challenge to find out something about these amazing birds. If anyone knows, it's Mark Smith. In the last 10 years, the swift has had a huge decline in population. 
right across the UK. And some numbers are saying, or some estimates, are 30% or more. So that's in 10 years, you've lost a third of the population of Swifts from the UK. One third down, and the main reason, modern architecture. So how would you describe it? A modern, attractive building set in its own woodland surrounds? Possibly. But from the wildlife that used to live there, it's a disaster. It used to be a huge mill. Today, smooth cladding, PVC and plenty of glass, but no holes and hideaways for Swifts to nest and raise their young. What they need are old buildings like this at Upper Crescent in Belfast, full of nooks and crannies. The features that are disappearing as new build takes over. And as they go, the Swifts go with them. Mark lives in a modern house in Antrim, but he's made it Swift friendly. So let's get the gen. First, a neat trick to call them in. Their favorite music, the sound of Swift's feeding. A little rook flying past has a steady speed away it goes. But the Swifts, somebody's worked out 200 kilometers an hour flying past a house. Somebody again working out with computers and LEDs that's 70 kilometers an hour, 50 miles an hour straight into the nest. You're talking about maybe a Harrier jump jet just suddenly going up the way. Swifts are protected by law, so you need a license to do this. Filming the adults is well nigh impossible, but the chicks, by close study of them, Mark unveils part of the story. And there's a huge learning curve to know about where do they go in bad weather? Where do they go in Africa? How far do they feed from their nest? For 96 days, they're here on my gable. And then for the other nine months of the year, they're gone and we don't know anything about them. The chicks that will leave these boxes in the next few weeks fly continuously for two to three years before they land. Bit by bit, people like Mark are filling the gaps in knowledge as a network of ornithologists builds across Europe, connecting people who want to protect swifts by getting to know more about them. There's a great story around these fascinating little birds, and we've only just heard a part of it. For instance, when they come back to feed the chicks, an adult will have 2,000 insects in its beak, and that's a fact. Brian Black, UTV Live. Amazing. Lovely birds. Now, Mark and the Northern Ireland Swift Group are very keen for people to install their own nest boxes for the birds. So, information on that and much more on the species, it's on the UTV website, u.tv, of course. Absolutely. Now, ten years after they last trod the boards... To